you may be seated. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, he said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and we want to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that read it for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end he shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries well for it because it will. Somebody say it will. Surely come it will not tarry. May God bless his word in the name of Jesus. Today we are going to be looking at living a life of impact. Living a life of impact. I want to start by letting us know that you were not created by God to make a living. But you were created to live your making and make a mark. You were not created to make a living. But you were created to live your making. You were created to make a mark. You were created to make impact. You were created not just for career. To pursue career. To pursue money and all that. You were created to practically deploy the re yourself to the reason why God created you. And make your impact felt in your world. Impact is not a function of wealth acquisition. But impact is a function of contribution to your world. Impact is not determined by what you can get from the world. But impact is determined by what you are able to give your contribution to your world. Impact in life is not measured by duration. Impact in life is measured by donation. Impact in life is not measured by he is 100 years old. He is 90 years old. Duration of life does not equal impact. But donation to life, contribution to life is what equals impact. A life of impact is a life that is lived knowing and doing what you were created to do by God. Discovering the reason why God created you. And deploying yourself to the discovered reason why God created you. That is the secret of impact. So you have not begun to live a life of impact. Until you first of all discover your reason for existence. And deploy yourself to the discovered reason for your existence. A life of impact is a life that is lived providing generational solution to generational problems. A life that is lived solving problems. A life that is lived generating solution to problems of life. I want to let you know this morning that while you are alive, you are either causing problems or solving problems. You are either part of the problem the society is trying to face in and trying to solve or part of the people solving the problem of the society. So the question this morning is which one are you? While you are alive, you are either causing people pain or bringing people pleasure. You are either helping people out of pain or pushing people into pain. There are people who are alive. People are regretting that they are alive. There are people who are alive and nobody is happy that they are alive. There are people whose death will call for celebration by some people. Why? Because of the kind of pain they have inflicted on others while they are alive. Why there are people whose life is gained unto others. They are impacting other people. Bringing other people joy. Bringing them happiness. Bringing them succor. The question is, which one are you? Are you a pain to somebody or a pleasure? Are you a problem to somebody or a solution to somebody? Which one are you? It is not what we think about you in church. It is not who you make us believe you are in church. There are people who, who in church and every other place, they laugh and smile and with everybody. But at home, their name is Ocha Bogota. In the office, they are Ocha Bogota. A woman in, in the church was testifying. 
how God blessed and prospered her. While she was testifying in the same church, somebody was in the audience saying, wicked woman, devil, satanic agent, Onyohi, you stole our money and you are coming to testify that God has blessed you. Why? They did some work and the money that United Nations brought that should be paid to them in dollars as allowance for that special project, the woman cornered the money and said, no money was brought. And why do I mm, 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 have a money, money? This woman added salt to injury by coming to church and giving testimony. How oh God bless her. That one is not an impact maker, but it's a pain inflictor. And that one will end up with cause upon her life. Am I communicating here today? Are you aware that when people have problems, they go for people to pray for them? Never allow yourself to become a prayer point to somebody's prayer. Somebody is busy going. Somebody did this. And you are the prayer point. That God should touch his heart. To pay us our money. God should touch. Am I communicating here today? There is a government office in this town. Where workers have not been paid for 14 months. Money come for the payment. The person in charge cornered the money into her bank account. Private bank account. People are in the office working. 14 months. If not up to 15 months now. No salary. And God is watching. And as I'm talking, the person is in, in, a, in a church somewhere. So the person is also in a church listening to a message. The person is either a deaconess or, or an elder in the church. But God is watching. So this message is coming this morning for you to begin to ask yourself, which kind of life am I living? And if you realize that this message has indicted you in one way or the other, change. Tell your neighbor, say change. change. Glory be to Jesus. A life of impact is a life that is lived with the consciousness of tomorrow and doing something today to be remembered for tomorrow. A life of impact is a life that is lived with consciousness of tomorrow and doing something today to secure a better tomorrow. A life of impact is a life that is lived enhancing human worth, value and dignity. A life of impact is a life that is lived enhancing human worth human value and human dignity treating human beings like human beings am i communicating here today horace Mann is a great philosopher and in the year 1859 he told a graduate student of the antioch university in 1859 he said be ashamed to die except you have won a prize for humanity be ashamed to die except you have won a prize for humanity. In other words, it is a shameful thing to die without impacting humanity. It is a shameful thing to die without making impact that even after you people are talking about you. In other words, it is not enough to graduate, but you have been graduated to a life of impact. Go into the society, make a mark. Go into the society, make sure you leave a mark that cannot be erased. Be ashamed to die. Except you have won a price for humanity. That means impact is the price that man owes humanity. So that implies that impact is the very essence of living. Living without impact is living without relevance. And I have said before and I say it again. If you want to know your impact in a place or your relevance, when you leave a place and your absence was not felt, it means while you were there, you were not impactful. When you leave a place and your absence was not felt, it means while you were there, you were not relevant. If nobody misses your absence, then you are as good as not existing at all. A man of impact, when he leaves, everybody notices his absence. There are people that when they miss church, nobody's aware that they miss church. Am I communicating today? For one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and they'll be complaining, eh, eh, I was sick, nobody came. You should be ashamed to be complaining. Because if you are impactful, everybody will know people will be calling and people will come. Two of us. There are people that when they miss church, people notice this place. Ah, this place is not in church. Oh. So if you have been around and something happened one day and nobody's aware, it means that your presence was not felt. You should do something to, for your presence to be felt. Make impact. 
there are women that in the homes where they are married nobody has felt their impact the only person they know is their husband and their children me my husband and my children nobody else feels their impact when they go home to the village they lock the door even to come out and greet family people is a problem nobody's aware they are existing lack of impact glory be to jesus martin luther king jr said an individual have not started living until he can leave the narrow concerns of his individualistic existence to the broader concerns of all humanity in other words you have not started living until you you go beyond just thinking about yourself and begin to think about others begin to think about your world begin to think about the problems of your generation and how to be a solution and provide solution to the problem of your generation you have not started living until you are thinking of how to make an impact in your world glory be to jesus that is a life of impact and i realize that the only time you have to make impact in life is your lifetime no man can make impact in the grave you have between your birth date and your death date to make a mark so when you go to somebody's grave and you see 1909 to 2017 dash 1909 dash 2017 that dash is a summary of your impact and it is a tragedy because a lot of people's dash is summarized with emptiness nothing to be remembered no significant result no significant mark has been made in their life as you are listening to me this one i want you to begin to ask yourself what am i living for what is the consequence of my existence what is the implication of my existence on my generation who am i touching who am i affecting whose life have i improved how have i impacted the society where i am there are people who make nothing but negative impact there are people who left office as governors just three years ago now everybody has forgotten about them there is nothing they can be remembered for but there are people who have ruled certain states 20 years ago they are still being remembered because of the projects that they executed some people construct road but as they are leaving office they road leave, leave office with them do you understand what i mean by that as they are leaving office the road expires and leaves office with them because everywhere becomes pothole if they told you this road was constructed a few years ago you won't believe it am i confessing but there are people who have constructed roads that have lasted for more than 10 years those roads are still being used because of quality construction some of the drainages in Omaha we are being constructed by Mbakwe. Mbakwe has died and gone. They called him the weeping governor, but the weeping, he was using the cry, the tears, to get the money to develop his region. Others now, what they know is squandermania leadership, squanderization leadership. So at the end of the day, nobody will ever remember the type of car you drove nobody will ever remember the type of house you built for yourself but people will only remember you for the impact you made on the society you will only be remembered for the impact you have made so the question is what impact are you making what is the implication of your existence in that office where you are what impact are you making in that home you married from what impact are you making in the home you are married to as a wife what impact are you making the bible speaks in the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven so if men cannot see your good works they cannot glorify god for your life so who is glorifying god for your life people will only glorify god based on what they see based on the light that is being radiated from your life so the question what light is your life radiating who is your life touching who are you affecting it's going to happen somebody here this morning a life of impact is a life that is lived with a consciousness of making a difference a life of impact is a life that is lived not conforming to the standard of the world but confronting the world with a quality and a better standard a man who will say 
things have always been done this way but i will not do it the same way it has been done i will do it in a different way that will give us better results we are in a country where everybody is crying there is no money all the governors are crying there is no money to pay salary is a problem yet we in the same country in the same region we have one man as a governor whose state is not an oil producing state but he pays salary up to date others were going for bailout fund he said they don't need any bailouts nobody bail them in they are not in any jail so they don't need any bailouts yet when he was handing over i personally read his handover note he handed over 86 billion naira cash he said governor i have paid salary up to the last month i have paid pensioners up to the last month we are not owing any contractor we are not owing any civil servant we are not owing any politician we are not owing anybody this is 86 billion to work with and other investment in millions of dollars with other money that they fix bonds they bought in the name of the state from central bank for appreciation handed over it's not an oil position state we have people who are collecting money oil producing state paris club this one the money is zoom, 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 zoom. grave is the only thing that does not get satisfied even if one billion people die all of them will enter grave is still there looking am i going to say any man that keep taking without giving to his word has become a grief any man that keeps taking from the world without giving back to the world has made himself a grief is somebody hearing something here this morning glory be to jesus a life of impact is a non-conforming and a non-blending life but an outstanding life a life that does not conform to the standard of the world a life that does not blend in with what others are doing but a life that is outstanding standing out on its own if it means standing alone let me stand alone but let it be clear that i'm doing the right thing that's life of impact you are not after what people are saying for as long as you know you're on the right track that is the life of impact i know of one house of rest member in those days from middle state in national assembly when they're about to pass all those wicked bills he will say no ladies and gentlemen even though you will have number me he will say in the bible in the book he will quote scriptures in national assembly so what you're about to pass this bill based on my conviction as a child of god i am not in support of this bill i know all of you will vote for it and pass it it doesn't matter but let it be clear that before god and before man i was not part of it everybody's watching on national television quoting scriptures one day i went to a church and i saw him very simple just came to church no but no oddly no driver just drove himself and entered church i said come nobody had a seat for national assembly say yes my brother i'm the one we talk very sound when they are doing the next campaign they didn't vote him but the man didn't mind he was a voice but how people who want to compromise and compromise there are some people that are there fourth time now they want to be buried there they want to die in my own belief nigeria is the richest country in the whole world because no country has been stolen from and is still standing like Nigeria. With all the stealing, we are still standing. This one they are telling you recession is a lie. That is the political language they are using to rip people off. Recession. Or he has read their fat allowance. Recession. Or he has a president bulletproof car. Recession. Do you know how much was the medical bill for last journey? How many of you remember last journey? Now you know there's another second journey. The last one. The, the bill is so much, they hide it. They told me the amount I've forgotten. Because the amount is so confusing. If you press it on calculator, calculator will show you error. Some of these people, they go to church. Pastor, preach for them. Glory be to Jesus. It is high time we begin to think of what is most important. It is impact. Because at the end of the day, you will only be remembered by what you have done. Nobody will remember the type of car you drove. Nobody remember how many cars you Nobody remember how many wives you have. You will only be remembered by what you have done. And what is another name for what you have done? Impact will only be remembered by impact how many lives did you touch i've never seen where somebody died and during the burial they were reading the funeral oration they said this man had 100 wives he had 1000 girlfriends he has 150 sons and this one he gave back to when he went to do his masters in london he fell in love with the woman there i had seven more children there i've never seen this man have three houses in new york he has three in south africa he has seven in london he has three in, in, in abuja in fact he has, has not the major cities of the country as achievement no way 
people only try to paint you white. You know what to want your metro. I know webkin gengen na ato ato niya dia. It's only in this part of the world that nobody is bad. No matter how wicked, there must be something good to say about the man on his day of burial. Glory be to Jesus. Is God helping somebody here today? But I thank God that judgment is not based on what people say. It is based on what you actually did. That's why the Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment. That is why nobody has been buried upside down to face the ground. No matter how bad and wicked you are, you will be buried to face. That God will refuse to face. Face him now, only you. At that point, what will be speaking for you is impact. Your legacy. How you lived your life here on earth. So the question is, how are you living your life? Is God helping someone here today? The life of impact is the life that is lived to elevate conscience above convenience. Elevate conscience above that which is convenient for you. The life of impact is a life that is lived to elevate posterity above prosperity. A life of impact is the life that leads to elevate principles above pleasure. Daniel elevated God's principle above pleasure. He elevated conscience above convenience. And Daniel was able to say no to the king's meat that is offered to idols in his time, which everyone was eating. He said no. That everyone is doing it does not mean I must do it. To eat what others eat is to end the way others end. A man that must end somewhere must live somehow. Must live his life somehow. You can't be the best in life by living like the rest. Daniel rose from captivity to leadership and authority in a strange land at the frequency of impact, principles, good conscience, and integrity of heart. A stranger, yet he rose. A man in captivity, yet he rose. What are the keys to a life of impact? What are the keys? I'll give you just three keys. Number one, vision. A man that must make impact must have vision and be a man of vision. You must have vision for your life. Life is designed to be inspired by purpose, fueled by vision and fired by passion. Life is designed to be inspired by purpose. The purpose of life is meant to be your inspiration. Life is meant to be fueled by vision. Just like a car stops without fuel. That is how every man that lacks vision will stop in life. Life is meant to be fired by passion. Passion for the vision. Passion for the vision and the dreams of your heart. Martin Luther King is being remembered all over the world for that single statement, I have a dream, I have a dream. And he lived by the principles and dictates to best that dream. Today, life will never forget that man. The question is, what dream are you living for? Why do you wake up every morning? If the only thing you wake up for is to go to market and sell and make money and to both the one you get by crook and by hook and the one you go to office and get by lying and stealing. If that is the only reason you are living for, then forget about it. You are not fit for living. If the only reason why you are living is to build a house, to have children, to send them to school and this is all you are thinking about yourself, yourself, then you are not fit for living. People are designed by God to live for a higher purpose. Purpose other than your life. And it's that purpose that you will be remembered for. So the question today is, what will you be remembered for? What do you want to be remembered for? Vision is the fuel of life. Vision makes you focus. And focus makes you impactful. And a lot of people whose life is not making impact because of lack of focus. Do you know that if I bring hammer, and hit this thing now, it will not break. Are you aware? Slay hammer. Whip! It will already do go go go. But it will be standing. I hit it again. Whip! It will already do go go go. By the time I come not to hit, go 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 go. Before you know, that one will fall off. Bam. Mm. Bam. Mm. Bam. Mm. Bam. I will keep hitting you. In that one that I hit, the thing now, bam. That was not the one that brought it down. It is the accumulated impact from the face hit that brought it down. And why it has to go now because of focus. I focus on it and I kept not to hit it. A lot of people, your life has not made him pass in a given area due to lack of focus. Today you are doing this one. Tomorrow you are doing the other one. Next tomorrow you are doing this one. When you attempt to do everything in life, you will end up achieving nothing with your life. The Bible said, this one thing I do. The 
is one thing I do. This one, not two. One. So the question is, what is the one thing you are doing with your life today? What are you doing with your life? When you aim at everything, you will hit at nothing. When you aim at everything, you hit at nothing. What is vision? Vision is the knowledge and understanding of how to fulfill your purpose in life. Knowledge and understanding of how to fulfill your purpose. The question is, what are you living for? What is your purpose of existence? Why do you think God created you? There is a higher reason for your creation. Working in the Ministry of Information is not the reason why God created you. Working in the Ministry of Finance is not the reason why. Even in that office, there is a higher purpose that should bring God glory. That is the reason. And that is why God has positioned you there. Am I communicating here today? As a lecturer, what is your purpose? Your purpose is not just to go to classroom and be teaching them animal science and witch science. There is a higher purpose. It could be to lead them to Christ. It could be to become the lecturer next door. That lecturer that students can freely come to and you help them out. You see, I've been a student all my life. You see all those students that are hmm, walking like gorilla inside class. It does not make students to respect you. They only fear you. And when students, they are praying, oh, they are praying, oh, come father, deliver me from his hands. Let me pass his course. The moment they pass your course, bye-bye. But you see all those lecturers who are very friendly, but very firm and very principled. I'm not saying you should be laughing with everything. <laughs> Students, they don't understand. They will turn you to Africa. So you have to, in as much as you are nice, you also have to be very, very fame. Am I communicating here today? You find out, yeah, I can always reach you. They can always approach you. When they graduate, there is a relationship. They don't always forget you. You have made an impact in their lives. As a police officer, it is not to be carrying face. You see, one problem is that anywhere police is, police looking for how to find fault. Carry your document, your car document. They as correct as the document is. Eh? What they are looking for is how to find fault. Document that does not have problem. When it enters your hand, it will have problem. And when you leave them, you discover it didn't have problem. It has happened to me before. Do you know what? When I left them and came home, I was going through my document. I realized the document has no problem. Because what they said was problem. I discovered, I now realize it was not even a problem. But a man that is there for impact. Sir, we just discovered this. But um, by the time you, what do you have to say about this? By the time you now discover, you now prove everything. It's okay, sir. Please, other people may not take it lightly with you. Go and see how you can rectify this problem immediately. Am I communicating how to do it? That is the life of impact. You are there to solve problems. You are not there to take undue advantage of people. Am I communicating here today? A man of impact is not looking for what to gain. He's looking for how to give and be a blessing. He's looking for how to do what he is supposed to do. It's not that there are some people that when you go to an office, they are looking for your file. They will go and hide it. Look for it everywhere in this world. You will never find it. Until you shake. You must, you must shake, buddy. It's a number that he lay in he, he, he watch the news. It's a number that he lay so he gave me something car you must water the grass otherwise the grass will not grow is it not true force you to do what you you ordinarily will not do and such people are in church now you'll be blessed amen Lord Jesus, amen we for where so have a vision for your life ask yourself why am i in this office that everybody is doing it does not make it right. Set a standard of how to do your own and do it right. Am I communicating here today? Vision is the picture and reality of the dreams and revelations of your heart. Vision is the mental photograph of your preferred future and destiny. Number two key to a life of impact, knowledge. Someone say knowledge. You must be knowledgeable. You must be a man of knowledge. Because knowledge is indispensable in your quest for impact in life. You must be impactful. You must be knowledgeful. Nothing empowers for impact in life like knowledge. To lack knowledge is to lack impact. A lot of people's vision have died due to lack of relevant information or knowledge required to make it happen. A lot of people's vision have died due to lack of relevant information and knowledge to make the vision a reality. And I realize the more knowledgeable you are, the more impactful your life will be. The more knowledgeable you are, the more impactful your life will be. Now listen. Paul the apostle was the last person to be arrested and become a disciple. Three of us. But among all of them, he made more impact than all of them. Because he was more knowledgeable than all of them. He was a lawyer. Because redemption 
does not nullify the functionality of your mind. And God will not use you beyond the, your knowledge base. God cannot use you beyond your knowledge base. That is why in everything you are doing, you have to seek to be the best. You have to seek to be well informed. You have to seek to be well knowledgeable. That's why I pity those who say they are, they are born again and they are called into ministry. No education. The God you manifest will be limited. The manifestation of God in your life will be limited to the level of your mental prowess. That's the truth. Because there is a limit to the kind of people you pastor, no matter how anointed you are. There are people you can't pastor. So that is why, you see, one of the problems we have, we are too spiritual. We are too what? Spiritual. A lot of things are going on in this country now. So many things are going on now. I won't talk about it now. So much is going on now. And you are talking to our people. They are behaving spiritually. God is in charge. God is in control. God. Which God? God is in charge. That's why he has brought it to you to know and begin to do something about it. God gave us brain to think and allow him to rest. Right now, there is distribution of Kungwaga going on. Our people are busy stealing money, embezzling money. Some people are busy arranging themselves how to deal with us. But I'm trying to talk about the fact that we need to start applying our hearts. We need to start applying knowledge. Anointing is not all you need. You need knowledge. You need what? Knowledge. Let me show you something in the book of Psalm 105. Everybody open it as I begin to round up. Psalm 105, verse um, 16 to 22. It says, Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and lose him, and even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house, and ruler of all his substance. Listen. To bind his princes at his pleasure, and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land. Let me read verse 20 and 22. Verse 20. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Verse 22. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Now, Joseph rise from the prison as an inmate, a prisoner, to the palace as a prime minister in Egypt was at the frequency of relevant knowledge. The Bible said that the king sent and loosed him to teach his senators wisdom. So, he sent and lose him to become the consultant to the National Assembly on constitutional matters. Budget review and implementation. Am I going to say? The question is, how was he appointed? Not with empty head, but with full head. So, it means while he was in the prison, he was busy reading. While he was in the prison, he was busy upgrading himself. When you are knowledge limited, you will be impact limited. One time we had a commission of police in this state, and I was I was browsing through the man's CV. The man graduated, he had NCE in chemistry. He now had his, his um, BSc in chemistry. Listen, chemistry. He now went back and did another BSc in sociology. He now did master's degree in criminology. He now did another master's degree in investigating criminal something something analysis. He now went and did another first degree in law. Master's degree in law. In this state, there's somebody carrying Bible with B.A.C. in sociology. I want to be commissioner. I want to be commissioner. You know, somebody there. By the time they now bring your CV, this one, um, B.A.C. Master's sociology. This one, N.C.E. Chemistry. B.A.C. Sociology. M.S.C. Criminology. Another one, investigating something, something, crime. Another one, law. And, oh, where you go start? <laughs> As again, we're in cases and cases. If there were award, need certificate, you go and get the certificate. Did you hear what I said? I'm talking about impact. Do you know now? If you have PhD, it's better. It's easier to get a job now with PhD. PhD now is easier. If there's no other job, by the time you apply to three, four universities, you must get a job as a lecturer. Three of us. By the time you call BNC now, everywhere will be full. Hundreds of people will gather certificates. 
By the time you now move it to master's degree, the number will reduce. But by the time you go to PhD, eh? see, the ground level is always crowded. If the ground level is crowded, upgrade yourself and go to the upper level. There are minimal people there. But church people don't think like that. We think that if we have Bible, that is all enough. No. Paul the apostle had Bible. He had Holy Spirit. He also had education. And he was more serious minded than all of them. Even in tongues, he said he spoke in tongues more than all of them. Because there is a discipline education puts inside you that you translate to everything that you do. Am I communicating here today? Listen, let me say this before I move. Knowledge will take you beyond where gifts will take you in life. Gifts will open doors for you, but your knowledge and your character will keep the doors open. See, gifts brought Joseph into the palace, brought him in, but knowledge kept him in. He was recommended based on the gift of dream interpretation. But by the time he got there, the knowledge, when he was talking, they saw him analyzing some econometric models. And he was giving them some economic analysis of the situation of the economy on ground. Say, so the way your mouth is doing, I'm talking inflation and deflation and stagflation and this one and this one. The way you're talking like this, you can oh yeah, become the prime minister so that I can manage the economy very well. He was not just talking dream, dream. You see, dream. He finished dream and he started econometrics. Number three, what must I do to be impactful? You must be connected to your source. Connection to source. Somebody say connection to source. Everything in life came from a source and must remain connected to the source to be sustained in life. Plants came from the ground. Plants must remain on the ground in order to be sustained. Fish came out of water. If fish leaves water, fish must die. Man came out of God. So if you want to be impactful, you must remain connected to God. The moment you detach yourself from God, nothing good can come out of you. That's why I said, without me, ye can do nothing. You must be rooted in God. And one of the requirements of being rooted in God is purity and holiness. Purity is the major sponsor of impact. Purity of Daniel was the foundation for his impact in Babylon. He refused to compromise. The integrity and character of Joseph was the secret of his rise in Egypt. Nothing fuels impact in life like integrity. Nothing fuels impact in life like good character and good conscience. Nothing deflects destiny like the absence of character and integrity. If you must make impact, you must make up your mind to consciously be a man of vision, be a man of knowledge, and remain connected to Jesus, your source. Rise up on your feet. Thank you for listening. I know you have been blessed by this teaching. I want you to also know that success is not possible without Jesus Christ. Life without Christ will be full of crisis. Life given to sin is life destined to sin. If you are listening to me right now and desire to give your life to Jesus Christ, place your right hand on your chest and pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. I welcome you into my life to be my Lord and personal Savior in Jesus' name. Join us in our first service 8 a.m. and second service 10 a.m. at Kingdom Glory Christian Center, King's House Auditorium, 24 Dozier Way Avenue, off Ikorekwene Road, Omaha. For prayers and counseling, please come to the church office, KGCC Auditorium, 24 Dozier Way Avenue, off Ikorekwene Road, Omaha, on Tuesdays, 10 a.m. To 3 p.m. For feedback on this program and other inquiries, please call 0805 9092 945 or 0809 077 6538. God bless you. He now can be compared with him. How can you comprehend?